Welcome everyone, these are the ladies of Salasta. I am Papa Sean, and we are going to resume our adventures with them in Salasta here at the Timarian Ruins. Alright, we just finished off last episode where we fought a bunch of goblins leading up into what looks to be a mausoleum. Alright, so we're at the monastery. Let's go ahead and pop on down here. I'm trying to see if there's anything. Ooh, I heard something. So there's some kind of loot down here. Go ahead and gather the ladies. Let's have a look. Just checking real quick to make sure we've got our mage armor on. Alright, what's in the bag? It could be anything. Even a morning star. We're going to go ahead and leave that there. And there's a box over here. I'm not quite sure why. Let's take a look at what's up with this. Okay. Looks like we've gotten that already. Alright, let's see what that noise was. Only Solaston building in the neighborhood. That must be it. Better be sure. Alright, got a bunch of quests that just popped up over there. We have a gem quest that we're on. I'm not sure what this is about. Let's take a look. Oh, and look, a long rest. It doesn't do anything. You may be missing something. It doesn't do anything. If we look closer at these, there's some symbols on them. It doesn't do anything. You may be missing something. Alright, so we can go down there to rest, and they probably would like to get their spells back, but I'm not quite finished over here. And I heard a noise. I know I heard a noise. Uh oh, an unknown creature. This action can only be performed if the character is not detected. That, that looks to be a Minotaur. Alright, let's send Roslyn back over here as fast as possible. Lorana, you're going to take around the corner there. Tessa, you're going to fall back a tick. Whoops, did I send the wrong one? I want Ginger to kind of hold the line. So Ginger, you're just going to move out of the way. Roslyn, get behind the cover. Lorana, you can do the same. Oh man, couldn't quite get there, but these guys surprised me. Oh my! Oh, that's pretty cool. He's got like a charge factor. These guys look awesome. You know, I've always loved Minotaurs ever since Kaz from the Dragonlance Chronicles with Huma. All right, Tessa, what what are you gonna do? You're at 22 AC, Ginger. I can't quite see you. Not sure how tough these guys are. Let's uh, let's stand next to Ginger. I think she's got what should be a wall, so she should get Tunnel Fighter as a result. We'll pop in next to Ginger. That should give her an extra one AC because of the cleric. Um, I don't think we're concentrating on any spells, so we're gonna go ahead and get get crafty, smacking around. We're gonna pass on our strike there. Just do a, ooh, ten damage, and it only took off a small chunk. Roslyn doesn't look like she can get line of sight blocked by that guy from that one action. Here she's visible by everybody. Trying to find where she can go to get some stealthy. Alright, so might not matter a whole lot. We're going to go ahead and move into a, a better position with Roslyn to get maybe some cover. Get her to get a chance to hide. But we'll just... Oh... Swing and a miss. She, she missed out on that. So we'll do cutting action. We're going to dash. We're going to try to get out of line of sight. This should do it. This should do it as well. They'll see us there. Alright, so if we move back here, next turn she should be able to hide, and then we'll start getting some nice uh, on-scene attacker bonuses with advantage. Lorana is not up yet. We've got 23 AC, and we've got that because of the Tunnel Fighter. Great. And the Blessed of the Herald of Battle. So being next to Tessa is really helping out. We can get it a little higher if we uh, cast the Shield of Faith. Why don't we go ahead and see how strong these guys are. We're going to try and knock one of these prone. Ginger is a master. And now that this guy's on his knees before Ginger... Since she's wearing the crown, she's going to do trivial damage to him. And if we move 
as long as we're standing next to a wall we're gonna get that plus two this would count on this side ah well she'll just hang out there this guy's coming around he's taking the long way I guess we're blocking the exit all right Lorana is not gonna well is she she can get back here it looks like that guy can't see she can get back here and hide but we'll just go ahead and cast uh, what am I going to cast on this guy? I can't really do fire bolts because the guy's prone, but unless we get closer. So maybe we'll cast on this guy over here. <coughs> Took 19 damage. Nothing too spectacular. She doesn't want to get caught out when that Minotaur comes around the, the bend. Having that nice AC of 23 on Ginger is going to keep her safe. Why don't we go ahead and just keep plugging away with a critical miss from Tessa. Alright, Rosalind is going to be able to go cutting action hide. Now things are going to get fun. She is going to be able to get line of sight on both these guys. And from this position, there's no cover it looks like for the Minotaur. Right. Decent damage, good job. And then that'll end her turn. Ginger's up. We like to knock him prone, don't we? Let's go ahead and... Oh, you know what? This guy, let's just try to maximize our damage. This guy does not seem like he's going to be hidden. That way we can use our wizard to cast on it. Oh, goodness. Alright, so Loran is going to move up, cast Fireball. Wow, he's got like one health left. Reckless. Ooh, 22 is a miss, thankfully. He, he had uh, Reckless, gave him advantage. Alright, Tessa. Let's drop this boy. He's Reckless, so that's what gave her advantage. Good night, sweet Minotaur. Alright, let's cover the ladies over on this side. And then Rosalind, still hidden, is going to be able to get a shot off on the Minotaur with advantage. Nice piercing. That was a lot of good stuff. Alright, she's still hidden. Good stuff. We can probably back her off. And then Ginger, she's going to move up. And if she moves up here, hopefully that counts as a wall with her tunnel fighter. Having that rock to the side, and it does not. So you can see how the AC has changed. She's lost a lot of her benefits. Look out, Ginger! <laughs> Alright, that was fortunate. Let's wrap up this Minotaur. Probably could have moved Lorana away so she wasn't getting cover from Ginger. We'll end that. Alright, Tessa. It looks like Rosalind's gonna get to finish it off. So a minor combat there, kind of caught us by surprise there, but good stuff. Uh, no loot? Here's some loot. Just a sapphire, a little bit of gold, and a great axe. We'll leave that for the scavengers. And we got a chest up here. So Tessa's going to throw out her Guidance Cantrip. This Guidance Cantrip is going to give Rosalind hopefully a better chance at opening that up. She's got her thieves tools. So uh, we're going to see what's inside the case. It wasn't even locked. Alright, we've got a scroll of revivify. We'll give that to our priest, cleric. A rapier we'll leave in there. Refined oil we'll take with us. This imperial mage report. Let's see what that's about. If you click on that to read. Alright, so the dream minder, Nilo Kyrell. 
is uh, hereby bearing witness of the miracle of light as part of a conclave of mages focused on the research of magic and accompanied by the always interfering imperial agents we were to investigate rumors of the sudden appearance of a seemingly magical construct of light deep in an uninhabited region of Aralaya. While fast traveling through still civilized areas of the Empire, we took notice of strange rumors that had started to spread. Sightings of creatures burly as dwarves, but almost as tall as Cytherna itself, clad in pelts and iron, aggressive and savage. At first, we thought some children were exaggerating their encounter with the lonely remains of some scattered dwarves, but later on we were able to study a captive while resting in a rural outpost. Its stature and surly look were comparable with the dwarves from the northern mountains, if it weren't for the obvious difference in size. Judging by the still wrinkled free face, it was most likely a youngling and seemed to be able to speak, but neither I nor my more traveled companions could make any sense of the guttural sounds it would utter. My colleague Andreo Silvertongue uses if it would be possible to use magic to understand these barbaric humanoids. But we didn't have time to further research this topic. Maybe our misguided brethren in the east might know more about his kin. Four days after we left the seat of Arcanium, while the darkness of the approaching night started to set in, we finally caught a glimpse of the incident we were tasked to research. I saw the sky burn with cold, otherworldly flames which were of a kind neither of us had laid our eyes upon. It is too dark to continue, and while a sight to behold, I sense a feeling of dread coming from this light. I entrust this interim report to an accompanying agent who will travel back this night to report the coordinates this magical construct can be found at. Tomorrow we'll advance further. Alright, so we've got the coordinates as part of that. Uh, we've got some arrows here. Let's move those to the first slot. And just using the, the random junk arrows. We got a pretty cool scroll for boating. Uh, let's move on and see what else we can find here with the ladies. I'm feeling like we probably want to use that. Uh, but we haven't used too many of our spells yet. So I'm kind of wanting to save it, you know. Not seeing anything else here though. We found that the mausoleum. Oh, there's an entrance maybe into the mausoleum. There's some symbols that we haven't yet entered in to get into the mausoleum. I think that's our next step. Can we modify the symbols though? Oh, there's a um, a little dais here at the bottom. Okay, so we have an elf, and she thinks it only works at night. It's a poem. There's a little seat here that might let us rest until then. Uh, and then, what else we got going on? A sequence. So we kind of thought that there might be a sequence it needed to go in. So it looks like there are some areas where shapes might be populated into here. Let me just uh, put this up. I might want to do a, a separate video for this uh, here in a moment. but. Um, I'm just going to save this so that we can come back to it if we need to. I'll call it test and I'll write test. Alright, so if we click on this, nothing happens. So, Lorana was suggesting we have to wait till night. We have a campfire here. We may be able to wait until night. What time is it now in the game? It says it's 4 p.m. So we really don't have a whole lot before it's midnight, but if the team rests for eight hours, that would put us at uh, 12 p.m. That would make it night. Uh, would you like to wait until the start of a new day? Well, I don't want it to be the start of a new day. Wait for a long rest. Okay, so I think that we're just going to rest here on the bench. And that's going to make it nighttime. Alright, so now... Now it's uh, 
showing different symbols, pieces of the pie. Looks like that one and that one make the whole. So let's go ahead and look at it, see what it has to tell us now that we can see the moon signals. Nothing. So we select that and it's casting moon on the, the on the wall there. That's pretty cool. And then we'll click the next one. Look, it and works. So these two cast it on the side and open up our doorway in. Cool. Who art thou? Old Elvish. We are friends, my lady. The master sent you? Which master? How dare you? Dare what? Come outside and look around. But it's impossible. Where am I? It's called the Badlands. No. I was in the Eralai, the heart of the Empire. I must find the master. Kitaela. My name is the Shield. No. My name is Kitaela of the Shield, whatever the Shield might be. Eralai? The heart of the Empire? Yes. This tower was in the Eralai, a haven of peace. I think she'd get mad again if I ask her about Which the Master. Which Master are you talking about? The Master of... I can't remember. What is this shield you're talking about? The shield is the master, and the master is the shield. But tell me, what happened? A thousand years ago, the cataclysm ravaged the Empire. Cataclysm? My lady, what is the last thing you remember? I don't remember any cataclysm. I remember a large room, people speaking about a rift, a great threat to the Empire. Strange creatures with strange powers. Strange creatures, yes, the Sorax, of course. No, they were called humans, strange beings with magic that was not arcane. They actually looked just like you. Fascinating. You witnessed a council of war. Can you recall anything else? One of the beings was wearing this crown, scintillating with gems. They called him Magister, with the utmost respect. But you are not him. Where did you find this crown? Scintillating with gems, you say? Yes. The crown was set with eight large gems. We found this crown in another part of the Badlands. There are no Badlands. Just look outside, lady. The Badlands are real. We had to fight Sorax to get the crown. Sorax? The scourge of humanity. They ran the humans out of Tiamar and came here to finish the job. The humans weren't the enemy? No, they were refugees fleeing the Sorax. Refugees? Eager to join the Enlightenment of the Empire. Slavery isn't Enlightenment. Those days died with the Empire. Silence, wretch! The Empire can't be dead! The Empire died with the Cataclysm, and even if it galls me to admit it, it saved Solasta from a horrible fate. Their combined forces assaulted the Rift. There was mention of the Rift in the Eralai. They managed to close it, but triggered the Cataclysm, ushering a Dark Age. The Dark Age? Those Badlands you mentioned? Yes. A thousand years rebuilding after near extinction. It can't be! I still feel the Master, and I must find him. Times have changed since you last traveled in the Empire. Still, I feel the pull. The pull? Yes. A pull to get to the Copper Veil of Remembrance. Take me there at once, and I shall name you favored servants. The Copper Veil of Remembrance? Yes. A fortress and place of rest for fallen heroes. Roughly in this direction. Copper. Fortress. Sounds like the Vale of Copperan. 
Hey, I don't want to say we're not servants. We are no one's servants, favored or otherwise. Traveling companions, we're all servants then. in this life. You can tell me of this cataclysm on our journey. You seem very certain that we'll go with you. Of course. You wouldn't let a lady cross those badlands alone, surely. I mean, their whole quest is about providing service, right? My beautiful river. Broken and stained. The pool. The pool. Master, I'm coming. Alright, so we need to find the Copper Veil of Remembrance so that she can stop feeling the pull. Uh, Alright, we can probably... So the mausoleum kicked us out. We can't even check out what's in there and stuff. Uh, we'll go ahead and take her out of... I wonder if it's going to let us proceed. I think this is the way. If we can come down here... Will it give us any options to further move on out? Because I don't want to just rest and then travel. And, well, they can get plenty of rest of other paths along the way. Alright, looks like we're heading out of Monastery. We'll go ahead and leave through the cliffside. So they're showing us Copperan being to the northwest. All right, so we have we're going to move on from the Tumerian ruins on to Copperan. And what happens if we do fast? It's still two days, and slow is three. So why don't we go ahead with normal, with one long rest, start traveling. Ashes of Mancolon. As you travel through the Badlands towards Copperon, Cathia asks you to stop near the old ruin. Okay. Alright, so because she's one of these small little pictures, we gotta keep her alive, otherwise we lose the entire T of uh, the campaign. Yes. This is the place. What do you mean? But it's... impossible. How do you feel? I propose we set up camp and get some rest. I don't think that's a good idea. I must find the master. Shouldn't we go to Copperan? I say we go. Yes. Right, there's something over here. Let's go ahead and give uh, guidance. Send the rogue over. And while that's happening, we want to unload some of this stuff that's weighing her down. These rations we can throw on Ginger. Uh, she's not been wearing her studded leather in some time, so let's leave that off. Give that back to uh, Ginger. I don't know what's making you so heavy, lady. Alright, so we're going to make sure we get that AC up too. So let's cast our mage armor on the rug. And we'll give it to Lorana as well. Oh. There's a trap. Okay. So you found a trap. Let's disable that trap. Yay! I probably should have done it a second guidance, but we didn't. Oh no! Orcs came up while we were investigating. An orc chieftain. Does this guy have two heads? Or has he got something hanging off his shoulders? Ah, uh, skulls. Skulls hanging on his shoulders. Alright, Lorana, you are up first. We are getting ambushed by these orcs, and what are you going to do about it? What happens if you do a fireball? What can you catch? Not a whole lot, but you can get these guys back here, maybe? 
Oof. All right, um, we'll move up a little bit, see if we can't get a better angle on this fireball. Because I'd like to use some fireball. The other side of it is we could maybe lock these guys down with a... Uh, hypnotic pattern. I like the idea of the hypnotic pattern. <laughs> Only one of them's out. That sucks. The fireball would have damaged all of them. Alright, well you used your spell. You're concentrating on a hypnotic pattern. That removes one of the dudes. We can't hide with her. Unless we move up here. What about now? Can we hide? Can we hide? We can hide, so we can use our cunning action to hide. She's going to come back out of hiding. And she's going to open up on this orc chieftain from below. No, it's crap. Alright, so she's able to continue to hide down there. Ginger's going to move up. No slaves, no gates. This travel is exhausting. <laughs> okay. Yes. Alright, what happens if we push this guy over the edge? Will he take fall damage? I'm curious if you can even do that. So curious that I'm going to use my action surge. And... Maybe I didn't need to do that yet. But uh, let's use one action for... I guess dashing further up. And then we should be able to shove, push away this guy. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nice. Okay, sorry about that, Rosalind. But you now have that that guy down there to play with. He's gonna want to make his way back up, but that's gonna give us a few turns as long as Rosalind doesn't get picked off. And we'll advance with Ginger the rest of the way. Well, and her turn. We have a spell of sparkle. You are some kind of awesome, aren't you, Kythila? Let's stick you out of the way. You can hide, so we'll keep you out of danger. Tessa is going to... If we wanted to move down here, we'd have to hop down. So this guy is going to be coming up. So we can block his path right here. She's going to have line of sight on him so she can cast a spell. And she's going to... What spell do you want to cast? Magic Missile. It will definitely hit. The other ranged attack spells will not. Or we can just do a, cat, a cantrip of Sacred Flame. Sacred Flame also is a save spell, so... He's going to save against it while he's laying face down in the water. It's cute. Big guy. Ooh, critical. Okay. Oh, he is... Whoosh. Scary-like. Alright, what do you say, Loran? You want to do some good versus this guy? <sighs> Let's let him up. Fireball, Scorching Ray. Let's do Scorching Ray. We're going to unload everything on this guy. And then we'll move on. This power increases the arcane fury. Okay, we'll leave that alone. Ginger, sad that she can no longer shoot at that guy, is going to target this one. Or maybe the archer. We'll go after the archer. Whoa! That's two garbage shots. We'll end her turn. This orc is still trapped inside that. Ginger's going to go ahead and do two attacks on well done. the standard orc. And then I'll end her turn. She's got nothing. Let's go ahead and end her turn. I 
I wonder if, if uh, can she knock them down too? <laughs> that would be fun to keep pushing them down. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, just shove the guy over the edge. Welcome back! Goodbye! Not far enough for him to take damage though. And if we step here, we can cast a spell, spirit faith, spirit weapon. I think we'll just hold off. Oh no! He's, ca he's shooting at our Lorana. Ah, uh, we're gonna pass. Save the spell. Take a little hit. It's only three. Didn't know what it was gonna be, but fortunate. Uh oh. How did he know to go that way? I guess he's going after the other guy. Alright, Lorana. We've got this guy. I thought I thought they were more damaged. Why don't we go ahead and light them up some more? Uh spirit we can go scorching ray on this guy. Boom, 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 boom. Get him, give him, give him, give him, give him. That was not very good damage. <laughs> She's done fire bolts bigger than that. Oh well. Uh, we can't hide here, but we can maybe hide over here. So we'll get back over to this area. Cutting action. We're going to hide. She's been missing with advantage. Maybe she can do some good now. Nope. She's still missing. And she's hidden still. No lo Is this guy still hypnotized? Yep. Good stuff. Ginger. It's going to turn her attention on the Orc Chieftain. Keep her back there. Tessa, having had her fun knocking him over too, is going to move up. And she's, she's had enough. I think we can catch everybody in this fireball. Now that they're all grouped nicer. I think we got it. I think we got it. Get him, Genji. I mean, Tessa. Oh, oh, did you really hit Ginger as well? 29 against Ginger. Holy crap. I didn't think she was in the line of fire. Sorry about that, Ginger. Reckless. Oh, Ginger going down. <laughs> oh gosh, Ginger. <laughs> she hadn't taken that fireball. Alright, we've got to do something about you. You're up in the face. So why don't we... We can burning hands would be the easiest option for you. Let's go ahead and smack you with one of those. This guy is not taking fire damage very much. Five fire damage. That in her turn, Rosalind's like, "Yeah, I can, I can take care of this for you." Let me get a lot of sight on him though. So Rosalind will move out. She's missed everything until now. Here it is. Good shot. Chieftain down. That'll end her turn. Tessa is doing a save and she lost it. This girl's gonna. She's watching her, <laughs> her buddies. Um, we can bring her up with our cantrip, uh, Spare the Dying, but we're going to hold off. That's a touch spell. We can move in. We can... I'm thinking we want to just move in and smack this person. That'll give her additional AC, too, when she comes back up. Oh, or I can just click the wrong thing. So, Ginger's no longer dying. She just passed out. Can't attack. Don't misclick on my part. Unfortunately, uh, Tessa's got a lot of AC. She's tanky tanky. Lorana's gonna finish off this guy, hopefully. He's getting half cover because it's going past an ally. And it wouldn't have mattered anyway with a critical miss. Roslyn. 
making up for past problems. All right, we're going to cutting action dash. We're going to get her uh, back up on top of the tower, or the bridge near the towers. She's moving slowly. And then uh, who's going to be next? That'll be Ginger, who's unconscious, followed by Kythea. And then here we go, Tessa. Tessa bringing in. Cast a spell of Sacred Flame. I never stood a chance. Yay, team. Wow. Sorry about that, Ginger. <laughs> She's out. Alright, so we'll go ahead and loot these orcs stuff. Get some money. Get some rations. An orc great axe. And a potion of healing. Orc mace, huh? Bludgeoning damage. Melee. We'll go ahead and leave these. And any other goodies? Lauren is standing next to another bag. In it, we find... This is the uh, chieftain's bag. Chainmail. We'll leave the stuff for the scavengers as well. Alright, we're going to group up on Ginger. I think if we cast a Cure Wounds, we'll just move on. I don't want to use a uh, short rest. You know what? I don't think you ever did collect what was inside that chest that got us into all this trouble. So why don't you go grab, go grab that? I'm not seeing anything else further down the river. So we got a blood. These were different items, I think. Or did I just misplace it? Blood of Solasta. Interesting. Uh, this recipe was closely guarded, secret in the Metacolon days. It's going to be used to craft magical items. Good to know. And then a shield plus one. Alright, so we'll loot all the... Well, you know, I, I might just leave that shield plus one. I already have that on both of the other characters. Let me grab these two. And just confirm. We've got Ginger. She's got a shield plus one. Here's Ginger. And the other one was Tessa with the plus one. Okay, so we can leave that for the scavengers. I'm hoping that we get more money from the scavengers selling it than we would get if we sold it. I have to take a look at that, but I know that when we sell stuff, we do not get much. Alright, on your feet, Ginger. We're moving out. Alright, the ladies have made it through the orc caverns uh, pass and now we're currently standing at the exit here. What is this going to take us? Because we're going to leave the area if we proceed. The dungeons of Manicolon. Kythea stopped again and asked to enter what seems to be an old imperial prison. So she's got a lot of pit stops along the way. She's going, taking us through memory lane. Alright, so the ladies are now inside the dungeons, and we will resume next time. So please uh, like, subscribe, throw in the comments anything that you'd like to see, adventures of the ladies of Solasta. Any questions, uh, would be great, and they will resume next time. Thanks again. Catch you later.